greeting to everyone. Did everybody catch your breath from this morning? And uh, what a wonderful morning we had. Two morning services, great numbers of uh, visitors in each service. Um, I'm thankful to the Lord for it. As a matter of fact, it was so good. Why don't we just have them do it again? Amen. I'm kidding about that. They just all had a heart attack. But um, our choir, um, the readers and actors, uh, the instrumentalists, didn't the orchestra sound great this morning? And um, just everything lifted up the Lord, and that, that blesses my heart. We thank the Lord. We had over 500 in the services this morning, and our Roma ministry is meeting now, and this is their fourth anniversary, the Roma service, and they're over next door and having a great time celebrating, and we'll find out all the numbers from there too. But this morning, we had many, many raise their hand to receive Christ their Savior. Um, didn't get a chance to meet all of them yet today, but some came by even in the lobby and shared with me about their faith in Christ. Um, some being saved, uh, Jewish people, uh, out, of, out of other even religious backgrounds. And I'm just standing in awe of what God has done. And I want to thank you, church, for working hard. And I know it's, I know it's Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday night, and uh, the crowd's much less attended on a Sunday night on a special day like this. But I want to thank you for working so hard, so diligently. And I want to say a special word of thanks to Brother Dwight and Renee for organizing, planning, and working to lead everybody on the team. Let's thank them again for their hard work. Thank you, Brother Dwight. Thank you, Renee. God bless you, folks. And uh, praise the Lord for what he's doing. We're looking forward to a great night tonight. How many of you came expecting to hear from God again tonight? Amen. Let's all stand together. We're going to start with a word of prayer. Let's ask God to meet with us, to stir our hearts once again. I'm excited about the message the Lord has laid on my heart for tonight. And uh, we're having baptism tonight as well, so it just, it just keeps getting better and better. But let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done on this day even. And Lord, it's a blessing when we pray and seek your face and we work hard to uh, see the gospel go forth and to see souls saved and lives touched and changed. And it's a real blessing when we see the fruit of that. So Lord God, thank you. Thank you for it. Help us now to disciple these newborn believers uh, thank you for those being baptized even tonight. And God, we pray in the days and weeks ahead as you allow us to live, that we may serve you faithfully, that may we, we may understand our purpose for our existence, our purpose for life and living. And Lord God, touch our church, help us to reach this community for Christ in a great way. Lord, thank you for our Roma ministry next door. A wonderful uh, four-year anniversary today. And you helped us birth that ministry on Easter Sunday, 2018. So we ask you to continue to bless them and bless Brother Lawrence and all the workers there. God, we pray that you'll bless this service. Speak to us. Help us to lift up your name and be glorified, we pray, in it. In Jesus' name, amen. As you remain standing, hymn 323, there's a hymnal under the chair in front of you if you'd like to grab that. Hymn 323, Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's sing it like we really believe it tonight.
As you're seated tonight, it's my joy to introduce our children's ensemble. And don't they look wonderful tonight? Praise the Lord. And we love our children. We love to enjoy all the things of the holidays with them. But we want our boys and girls to know that this today was all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm thankful for moms and dads and uh, leaders in the church that are making sure that message is taught and proclaimed to young lives. God bless you, boys and girls, as you sing for us tonight. Thank you, boys and girls. That was a great blessing. We praise the Lord for that. Uh, it's always a great joy and privilege to greet any first-time guests with us at First Baptist. And if tonight is your very first time with us, we're so glad that you have come. And uh, Jim, good to see some of your family and friends back there. God bless you folks. And to get to see Glenn Seabass tonight, one of our missionaries uh, with Rock of Ages Prison Ministry with us tonight. And uh, others here tonight, for some maybe for the first time, we're glad you're here. And do me a quick favor, if it's your very first time with us at First Baptist, there's a guest card in the pocket of the chair right there in front of you. And if you wouldn't mind, right now, take a moment and fill that card out for us. That just gives us a record of your visit tonight. And we're so glad that you've come. Good to have Santiago's mom with us, Odie, over here. And God bless you for coming. We met her before the service. And, uh, but, but if you would, just fill out that little guest card. And then, uh, before you leave tonight, at the end of the service, go by the Welcome Center out in the lobby, and our greeters will meet you there, and there's a gift there for you, and that's a way we have of saying thank you for coming. I hope we didn't run out of gifts this morning. We had a lot of visitors, and, but that was great. I think we had plenty. So go by all the guests, if you will, at the end of the service tonight. Let's all stand together and sing 327 in our hymnal. We're going to sing two songs here back to back, and they fit very well together. I think you'll see that as they develop. But this is a great one, a great old hymn of the faith. He lives. How many of you believe he lives? Let's sing it like we believe it tonight. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he 
whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He Appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation. Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. God, Father is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. shouted 387 if you got your hymnal 387 in a song like the pastor said goes very well be he, because he lives 387 God's in his Bye. 
across the river, I'll fight my singing tonight. Thank you, church, for that. And I want to remind you to be faithful tonight in our tithes and offerings. And I know many gave their Easter offering earlier today. If you didn't have a chance to do that yet, you can do that tonight. At the conclusion of the service, the, um, the ushers will be back by the back doors with the plates. You can just drop it off on your way out. There's also offering boxes out in the lobby that are there for us at any time. And nowadays we have the online giving, so up on the screens if you need that, if it's helpful for you, or even those watching online, uh, text to give numbers there, the online, uh, the website, you can go to the homepage and follow the link, or you can even mail the offering to the church as needed. I'm going to ask Brother Glenn Seabass to come on up and lead us in our prayer for our offering. And uh, Brother Glenn is one of our missionaries. Brother Seabass is going into the jails and prisons and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the God's using him and his wife in a great way. It was good to have one of his daughters here the other day and sons-in-law. Uh, Douglas and Stacy were here with their family. And uh, we love Brother Glenn and his family. But they're doing a good work. I want you to, in just a moment, just give us a little update on how the work's going. Brother, we pray for you. And uh, we do a missionary spotlight every Wednesday night. And you come around in the rotation. And many are praying for you every week and even some every day. And uh, we're, we're thankful for what God is doing with Brother Glenn's life and ministry. As he comes to say just a word of testimony and then lead us in our prayer, um, just a few prayer requests on our heart. Keep the Taggarts in your prayer. Um, Tom Taggart did pass away yesterday. I mentioned that in, in one of the services this morning. But uh, keep their family in your prayer. It was, it was quicker than they expected. He had been very sick with cancer, but he took a turn for the worse, and he went home to be with the Lord yesterday morning early. And Tom knew the Lord. He's with the Lord, had a strong testimony of faith. But we uh, pray for the family tonight, so keep them in your prayer. Brother Steve Jones, also pray for him. His brother Mike passed away. I did the funeral for them last week. Brother Ed Williamson uh, went through his surgery. He's doing well, but needs uh, healing. Bill and Annette Chenard, keep them before the Lord in your prayer. Brother Paul Sargent, Scott Fountain, Sylvia's dad, Val Valdez, keep him in your prayers as well. The steeple project, the building, you know my prayer list, it's long. But anyway, uh, thank you for writing a lot of those things down and just being in prayer for them. And uh, Brother Glenn, we're going to have you say a word and then lead us in a prayer. And then after he prays, we have a trio coming to sing. It's about the cross. I love songs about the cross. And how many of you remember Brother Glenn's a singer? How many of you remember that? And he's a great singer. And uh, he, he, he used to sing way back. I remember at Gulf Coast Baptist Youth Conferences and such, we'd be through there and singing. And uh, God has used him in, in not only his preaching, but his singing ministry. So how many of you vote Glenn ought to sing tonight? All right, it's a, they voted for it. We're working on it. And so I'll tell you what, when we're preparing for our baptism at the end, we'll have you come up and sing. Does that sound good? So he'll sing for us tonight, and we're just going to have a good old time tonight. Amen. Amen. But Brother Glenn, come say a word about what the Lord's doing in the prisons, and then pray for us, if you will. God bless you, brother. Thank you. It's good to see you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Odom. Thank you, church, for... Uh, uh, was that... Were they asking me to sing, or were they waving? I, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but anyway, no. 
Uh, I, I do appreciate the opportunity to be here and uh, what a privilege it is to be able to minister on your behalf within the prisons. Thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, we are uh, continuing to try to get back into uh, the prisons that we are in. Uh, a lot of things have changed since the COVID thing has come through and they're sort of trying to push what I used to do out. And, uh, and for the most part, they're, of course, the, the chaplains have the ability to, you know, well, I want this ministry and don't want that. And so we, have, uh, we are adjusting things and working on some new things. So you continue to pray for us. We are in prisons on a regular basis every single week right now. Uh, we are in uh, four or five, five prisons every single week and two others on, uh, on and off basis here and there every month at the moment. And we have about three others that we are working with at this time and a new program that I've been working on, hopefully be able to have that up and going within the next month or two months. There's a lot of different things that I have to go through to get it uh, instituted with the prisons. So continue to pray for us. Also, we're working with some new people uh, that are interested to come in with us with some different things. And I will need some assistance with some of the new programs that we are working with. But we're continuing to give out the gospel over the last two weeks. We, I think we've had somewhere around 16 or 17 come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior within those prisons. And uh, so God is continuing to see people saved. One of the nice things, actually, uh, like I said, I was doing revivals prison to prison. We were doing more than 56 meetings every single year here in Florida as well as others elsewhere. Uh, but with being in every single week, I'm having the opportunity to work specifically with men and, and uh, my wife with the women and, and uh, we've been able to see people mature and uh, they're just really coming around and what's really neat is when I go in, I have guys wanting to share what God is speaking to their heart about and that is just such an encouragement and seeing them really grow and their eyes just go aglow and talking about how the Lord's been speaking to their week in their personal quiet times and their personal time with reading uh, the scriptures has really been an encouragement to us. So again, thank you so much for your prayers. Know that uh, some lives are being changed and uh, we're certainly looking forward to got some people getting out very soon now. I think we got about four prisoners supposed to be getting out within the next six months and we're praying that we'll be able to get them placed in local areas. One of them is supposed to be coming in this area. I've already told them they need to come to this church and uh, so uh, I said you know you need to go where uh, where they're willing to support and work uh, with you and I said this is a great church and they need to come here and so this has been on my recommendation for everybody out here that comes in Miami area and so uh, you just continue to pray for us that the Lord will help us continue to minister to these and see them grow and get a hold of the Lord in their life and start doing something for the Lord when they get out yeah. amen and so thank you so much again for your help let's pray together this evening father uh, we think of these families Lord that have been mentioned that just lost some loved ones this week God I do pray that your uh, peace your comfort would be very evident upon them, Lord, that you would help them and give them that, uh, uh, just that help that only you can give them, Lord, just watch over them. And I pray that you'll bring people by to continue to minister. And uh, Lord, thank you for the testimony that these have known Christ. And what a great comfort that is, Lord, uh, to leave this life is to, uh, not losing life, but going on to that eternal life in Christ if we know the Lord. And what an encouragement that is, Lord. Uh, they're there and they're awaiting us on the other side and heaven's getting sweeter all the time, Lord, as our loved ones go on before us. So I do pray that you'd watch over these, Lord, for those that are, are sick that were mentioned tonight. Father, may your healing hand be upon them. God, give the doctors wisdom as they minister to these, uh, Lord, to know what to do. But again, Lord, most of all, we know it's you. So Father, pray that you minister through these doctors to these uh, that are in those needs. And God, just pray that you'll help them. Lord, we do pray for the services tonight, that the name of Jesus Christ will be honored, magnified, and glorified in everything that is done. Because, Lord, we know that you are worthy of it all. What a great God you are. Thank you for sending your son that we might have this hope, Lord, not through his death only, but Lord, through that resurrection power. Thank you so much for this wonderful day that we have to commemorate that. And Lord, every single Sunday, that is what we commemorate. Bless, Lord. Help us to realize that every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday because, Lord, you've given it. And now every man who be believes in the Lord Jesus Christ will also have that promise of resurrection from death 
to life in Jesus Christ. Bless and help now, Lord, in all that is done. In the name of Jesus Christ, he who is living and coming again, we ask it, Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you, ladies, for that message and song, and thank God for the cross. If it wasn't for the cross and what Jesus did at the cross, and if it wasn't for the resurrection, none of us would have any hope of eternal life tonight. Those of us that have confidence and have faith and understanding of heaven and a future home in heaven, we know that it's not because of anything that we've done, it's only because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And tonight, if you are saved, I hope and pray you're standing in the gospel. And it is the gospel that saved us. It is the gospel that strengthens us to live the Christian life and all that we do. And if you're here tonight and you're not sure, if you're not sure you know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, can I tell you, tonight is a great night to get saved. Tonight's a great night to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him to forgive you of your sins and save your soul. And we would rejoice with you in that as God would speak to hearts. But praise the Lord for His goodness. If you have your Bible with you tonight, church, family, let's open up the Word of God to the book of John in chapter 20. We're going to continue uh, our studies together in this book of John. Now, I challenged the church last week and encouraged you to uh, read along with me the gospel according to John this last few days between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday, and I know many of you did that, and 
you shared that with me, and I appreciate that. If you didn't get a chance to finish up your reading of, of John 12, 12 through John 21, 25, I would encourage you to do that tonight. Now, don't do it while I'm preaching, but do it later, okay? So don't use my time. No, I'm kidding with you about that. But even tonight before you go to bed, it's not a real long read. You can enjoy that. But uh, many of you have shared that you've been reading through with me these chapters from John 12, particularly verse 12, through the end of the book. And those chapters walk us through the week of Christ's resurrection. So starting with his triumphal entry at Palm Sunday, we celebrate that. And then the events of that week, and that of course includes the crucifixion, the death of Christ upon the cross, the blood that was shed there, the price that was paid. It is John's gospel that, that gives us that saying from the cross, it is finished. Did you read that as you were going through chapter 19? And I preached on that in our chapel at our Christian school Friday. And I've just been enjoying John. I've just been grazing through there and loving it and preaching through it uh, even this morning. And now tonight we continue that. Did it catch your attention? You know, every year when I do this, I do a different gospel record usually. Don't you always see something new when you read the Bible? I mean, you could read the book of Proverbs every month, year round. You're always going to see something new. And... I'm preaching tonight a message that God laid in my heart for this hour through that reading. Just something that stood out to me. I've, I've seen it before, but just this year it spoke to me in a special way. But did you notice how all through those passages, John 12, 13, 14, 15, of course, uh, beginning there in uh, those chapters we find the upper room discourse and so on. But did you notice as you read through there, how much Jesus spoke to the disciples. He was always speaking to his disciples. Now, he spoke to the crowds, but he had that inner circle. He had those, uh, those serious disciples or those who should have been the serious disciples, and he's speaking to them. He's pouring his truth into them. He knows he's going to the cross. The crucifixion happens in John 19. So when you lead up to John 19, you see him talking to them and talking to them. And, uh, but it's just like... It's just like they're not getting it. You know what I mean? It's sometimes when you look at the disciples, you think, how in the world could they be so hard-headed? And then you remember yourself, and I remember myself. How many of you are hard-headed? Amen, I'm hard-headed. And uh, sometimes I don't get it the first time or the second time. And the Lord, how many of you are glad the Lord's patient with you? <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm glad God's patient with me. And he just he's giving them truth and truth and truth, and yet... The way they behaved, if you notice it, the way they behaved after his death, they did not understand the resurrection. The Bible tells us that clearly. As of yet, they did not understand that he would rise again. Even though he had told them, they just didn't get it. I mean, the disciples are running and hiding. Mary, even Mary Magdalene, we studied her this morning. Uh, she didn't get it right away. She's weeping and crying. Somebody took his body. Where did they put his body? And she even thought when she saw Jesus that he was the gardener. And she asked him where, if he had taken the body. And, but then something happened. The resurrection of Christ changed everything. And it's interesting that when you continue reading through John 20, once Christ reveals himself resurrected, he continues to speak to his disciples. But now it's different. Now their eyes are open. Their ears are open. Luke's gospel record actually says in Luke 24 that he opened their blinded eyes on resurrection day so that they could understand the scriptures. You see, they were blinded. They did not have a full understanding of what was going on. And they needed the Lord to do a work of opening. You know, it's an interesting study of the things that opened on Resurrection Sunday. The tomb opened, right? And then the understanding of the disciples opened. The eyes of the disciples were opened. They saw who Jesus was and is. They, they understood the scriptures. They understood the gospel. And I want to tell you tonight, we need that work of God in our lives tonight. 
Because there's a lot of Christians that sit in church like this and they hear the preaching and maybe even they're faithful to their daily devotions and they read the Bible and uh, they're listening to God's truth, but it's like they're not getting it. You ever heard the phrase, it's going in one ear and out the other? <laughs> I heard that a lot growing up from my parents. They were correcting me. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. I always wondered about that. <laughs> anyway, But that happens. It's like we're hearing truth. We're hearing truth. Uh, we're living before John 19. We're living before the resurrection. We're hearing it, but we're not getting it. I want to live over there in John 20 with my eyes open, my understanding open. So when the Word of God is spoken and when I read it and when I hear it preached and it's delivered, that my eyes can see it and my heart can understand it and my life can obey it. Oh, may God help us tonight. So I'm going to preach tonight on the message of the resurrected Christ. He was giving a message before the death, burial, and resurrection. But boy, when he started speaking after the resurrection, things were different. And I pray it's that way for us. Notice with me in John chapter 20, picking the story back up in verse 19. We finished our reading in verse 18 this morning, but look at verse 19. Then the same day at evening. Now this means it was Sunday night. And I'm just going to say this, I'm glad you're in church on Sunday night, amen? Amen. When you miss church on Sunday night, you might have missed it, Jesus might show up. (laughs) And the first resurrection Sunday night, there was a church meeting, so to speak, (laughs) and Jesus showed up, and Thomas missed it, didn't he? And he always regretted that. But anyway, you're here, so praise the Lord. Verse 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Do you remember in John 14, in the upper room before the crucifixion, when he began to speak in John 14, 1, when he said to them, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Those were important words, but I want to tell you, they didn't hit like these words hit. Why? Why? Because the gospel changes everything. When we see the resurrected Christ, his words have more power, don't they? I guarantee you, if they weren't paying attention in the upper room as close, they were paying attention that night. Here he is, alive again, resurrected. And he speaks to them, peace be unto you. Verse 20 goes on, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Can you imagine that? Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And this he had said, and, and when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, They are retained. Heavenly Father, speak to our heart tonight. Help us, Lord Jesus, to hear your message. When you came out of that tomb on Resurrection Day, you had a message. Help us to hear it, to understand it, to apply it to our own lives even tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. It's important for our Bible study part of the message tonight to understand that when Jesus rose from the dead... He did not immediately ascend into heaven and stay there. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that there were many days between Christ's resurrection and His ascension. Now that fact is found in Acts chapter 1. And if you want to turn one page over, at least in my Bible the way it's laid out, one page over, look at Acts chapter 1, the book right after John. The Bible says in Acts 1-3, "...to whom also He showed Himself alive..." After his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them, how many days, church? Forty days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So it's important to understand that there were 40 days between Christ's resurrection and his final ascension into heaven. Now, that's interesting to me. Because if you think about it, God 
Jesus could have just resurrected and gone straight on into heaven and taken his seat at the right hand of the Father and began interceding and that would have been it. But God had ordained that there would be these 40 days, 40 days uh, between his resurrection and his ascension. And during those 40 days, Jesus said many things. And he did many things, and those things are recorded toward the end of all four gospel records, and it's a really fascinating study to kind of piece them all together. And to see some of the things Jesus did, and to hear some of the things Jesus said in his glorified, resurrected being and state. But here John gives us part of that. It's important tonight that we understand the message of the resurrected Christ Jesus came out of that tomb with something to say. Now, he had a lot to say before the tomb, before the cross. But man, when he came out of that tomb, he had something to say. And how many of you think whenever Jesus speaks, it's important? And so we're seeing the emphasis of his message after the resurrection. And they needed it then, and hey, we need it now. We need it tonight. Notice with me a few things about the message of the resurrected Christ. Number one, it was a comforting message. It was a comforting message. Isn't it precious that the first thing Jesus said to the group, these would have been the disciples, the the inner core of his followers. Of course, Judas had hanged himself. He was gone. But this is the group that had followed him. This is the group that he had trained and taught. They had been through many things with him. By the way, this is the group of men who would turn the world upside down in the next few days and weeks and years. This is an important group. This is his disciple. These are his disciples. And the first word he speaks to them in this text is peace. He understood what they had been through. A very traumatic set of events, no doubt, to see their Lord, their Savior, crucified the way that He was. He understood. He was compassionate. He had spoken about peace and not having troubled hearts in the upper room. And now here again, He is concerned about their peace. Peace of mind, peace of heart. I love that about Jesus. He wanted them to have peace. He wanted them to, uh, to, to, to see fear removed from their life. And did you know that He still wants that for us tonight? I hope you have peace tonight in your life. You say, well, I don't have peace. Where do I find it? Come to the Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus. And as the old bumper sticker or sometimes t-shirt say, no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. K-N-O-W, amen. But without Jesus, there's no peace. But in Jesus, there is peace. And I want to tell you, uh, the peace that Jesus offers starts, listen, with peace with God. You see, if you're lost tonight and you're not saved, uh, you are not a a child of God. You're a child of Adam. Before Christ, we're uh, we're children of the Adamic race. We're children of sin. The Bible even says lost people are children of Satan. We're not children of God until we're born again into the family of God. As a matter of fact, not only are we not His children if we're not saved, you are an enemy of God. If you're not saved tonight, you're standing on dangerous ground. I don't want to be standing on the ground that's the enemy of God. If God be for us, who's against us? So the first peace that Jesus offers is peace with God. And that comes through salvation. And when you receive Christ as your Savior, and He comes into you, and you're in Him, you're standing in Christ, and you have the same relationship with the Father that God the Son has. Praise the Lord for that. I have made peace with God salvation in Jesus Christ. But there's a second type of peace that we as Christians need. And that is the peace of God. You see, you can have peace with God and yet not be living with the peace of God. There's a difference between those two things. Tonight, I hope and pray you're saved. And if you are saved, I want to ask you tonight, are you living with the peace of God in your life? Oh, so many Christians tonight are troubled about this and they're troubled about that and they're fearful about this and they're fearful about that. And I want to tell you, dear friend, that is not the will of God for us. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And God wants to cast fear out of our heart and put His peace in here. Do you have the peace of God 
tonight. Again in verse 21, not only in verse 19, but again in verse 21, he says unto them, Peace be unto you. He says it again. Eight days later, he meets again with the disciples, and this time Thomas is with them. And that's down in verse 26. And again, when he meets with them, he says at the end of verse 26, Peace be unto you. It's important tonight that God, God is important to God that we have peace. Number one, we find peace in his presence. Oh, there is peace in the presence of the Lord. Did you notice in verse, go back to verse 19, and it says here in the middle of the verse, the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and watch, stood in the midst and saith unto them, peace be unto you. You know where you find peace? You find peace in the presence of the Lord. You find peace in His presence. When you walk with God, you sense and know His presence, and His presence brings peace. Though we've heard that story about the ship that's in the storm, and it's being tossed to and fro, and man, uh, everybody's scared to death. They think they're going to die, and the waves are coming overboard, and the water's going everywhere, and people are running around that, that boat, that ship, and they're screaming and crying. They're throwing luggage overboard, items they think they're going to die. And this one lady sees this little girl in the midst of all that chaos. And this little girl is sitting there against the cabin of the ship. And she is peaceful as can be. She's playing with her little dolls without a worry or care in the world. And the woman stops being chaotic for just a moment. And she stops being frantic for just a moment and fearful. And she just can't help herself. And she goes to the little girl and she says, little girl, is there something wrong with you? Do you understand that we're in a storm? We could die here? How can you not be afraid? What is wrong with you? And the little girl just smiled and pointed over here at the cabin. And she pointed in there. And she says, what are you saying? She said, oh, listen. She said, lady, she said, you got to understand something. She said, you see that man in there? You see the captain of the ship over there? That's my daddy. And we've been through lots of storms before. And I know, I'm sitting here, and I know as long as I can see him and he's in control, everything's going to be all right. And she went back to playing with her dolls again. You know, that's how it is with us. Life can be difficult. Life has a way of bringing things to us and bringing that to us that we did not expect, doesn't it? Trials. Storms of life come. If we're not careful, we get nervous, we get anxious, we get careful about many things, we get worried, we get fearful. What we need to do is look up at Jesus and remember He's the captain of our ship and He's in control. And as long as He's in control, everything's going to be okay. Amen. There's peace in the presence of the Lord. We find peace in His power. You know, it's interesting that He breathes on them there in verse number 20. Or go back, go back with me if you would to, verse, to John chapter 20. And verse 22. And when he, had, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, of course, this is a foreshadowing of what would happen at Pentecost. Now, Pentecost would happen 50 days later. And we know the story in Acts 2. The Holy Spirit would come in power and seal them and indwell them. This is a fulfillment of the promise of John 14 and John 16. But here is a foreshadowing of that. And he's reminding them, hey, that Holy Ghost that I spoke to you about in John 14 and John 16, He will come and He will comfort you. And He will, we know, of course, later, He would empower them to do the work of God. And there is a peace that comes in knowing that we are indwelled tonight by the Holy Spirit of God. The Apostle Paul said, if God be for us, who can be against us? The next time you're tempted to lose peace and to have fear and to be troubled, just remember this, God the Holy Spirit lives within you. He's with you. The Lord is with you. So tonight, he had a comforting message. Number two, he had a commissioning message. When Jesus came out of that tomb, he had a commissioning message. He had a job for them to do. He had a mission for them to fulfill. This passage in John 20 that we're studying, particularly if you notice in verse 21, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. This passage is often referred to as the Great Commission. 
Now we've heard of that before. It's found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. It's found five times. You can mark in your notes. It's Matthew 28, 19, and 20. It's found in Mark 16, 15. It's found in Luke 24, 46 to 48. It's found here a fourth time in our text in John 20, 21. And then a fifth time in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Each of these great commissions were given by Christ after His resurrection and given to the disciples. And I want you to know that the Great Commission is still active today. The work of going and preaching and baptizing and training and teaching and discipleship, all of that is still active today. Uh, we need to put the word go back in the Gospel. Amen. We need to get busy fulfilling the Great Commission. The Lord's last request should be our first priority. In many churches and in many Christian lives, unfortunately, the great commission has become the great omission. Have we forgotten? Have we forgotten that the message that has changed our lives and changed our eternal destiny is in our hands and we are called of God and commissioned of God to take that message to every person we can take it to? Every land, every tribe, every tongue. Oh, listen, it's a commissioning message. Our mandate tonight is go. Our message tonight is the gospel. Our map tonight is all nations. Our market tonight is all people. Our motivation tonight is the love of God. And our motive tonight is the glory of God. What could be greater than the Great Commission? Get your pockets and purses full of tracks tonight. Go tell somebody about Jesus. We had a big push leading up to Resurrection Sunday to get these invite flyers out. And many of you got involved in that. Wasn't that fun? Wasn't that great? And, uh, you know, you meet people, you start conversations, and you get to hear things about folks. It's, it's great. Nothing like it. Well, guess what? Next Sunday's not technically Easter Sunday, but it's still Resurrection Sunday. Because every day is Resurrection Day in our heart. Jesus is alive every day. Let's work hard to get folks here next week and the next week. And let's go out not only trying to invite people to church, but let's learn how to share the gospel. Look for opportunities. Pray for divine appointment and learn to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, I thank God we have a soul winning church. There's a good number of people in our church that are soul winners. Faithful. I, I, I tell you, I'm encouraged by that. Not all churches have that. And we're blessed in that. But wouldn't it be something? Look. There doesn't exist a church where 100% of the membership are faithfully going after souls. Let's be the first, amen? <laughs> Let's go after it for God. We have tracks out there. I love our gospel tracks. Brother Joe does a great job helping us with that. We have a track ministry second to none, in my opinion. I love it. As a matter of fact, listen, I, I was going to show you this at the end of the service, but I'll show it to you now. We have a new hockey track. I mean, we got hockey covered. Praise the Lord. And uh, so how, many, okay, how many of you are hockey fans? We're in South Florida, right? We have a good hockey team in South Florida this year. Uh, maybe some of you didn't even know that. You don't even know what hockey is. But anyway, we have a hockey, yes, an ice hockey team <laughs> in South Florida called the Florida Panthers. They play right up here in Sunrise. And they're doing great this year. I'm told. I, I follow it a little bit. I think they're in first place, and they're going to be in the playoffs. So you know what Joe did? He said, Pastor, we need to do a hockey track. He said, there's going to be people all over South Florida excited about the Florida Panthers. And you know he's right. I've heard more people talking about the Florida Panthers just out and about than I have ever. I've never heard of the Florida Panthers, you know, much. But they're really doing good now, so people are talking about it. People are excited about it. And he says, you know what? He said, we need to do a a hockey track just to get people's attention and um, that'll get it get us in the door and then we'll have the gospel I said let's do it so brother Mark pastor Mark Manning and uh, brother Joe and I we worked on it it's a beautiful track they're out there now it catches people's attention on the insides of the gospel we got seasonal tracks listen if you when you stand before the Lord the judgment seat of Christ if you were a member of this church there's one thing you're not going to be able to say to Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ you're not going to say, Lord, we didn't have any gospel tracks at our church. <laughs> that excuse is gone. <laughs> but you know what? All of us need to go carry the gospel. Whether it's a gospel track, a gospel witness, and invite the church, sharing your own testimony. Let's all tonight determine to hear 
the voice of our resurrected Savior saying, Go. Go! In John's record, he said, Even as the Father sent me, so send I you. Wow! That's quite a statement. As the Father sent Him? How many of you believe that the Father sent the Son with a mission? Raise your hand. Yeah, an important mission. Well, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. So guess what? The mission that Jesus has given to us in the Great Commission, it is vital, it is divine, it is powerful. Let's go fulfill it for God. So He came out of that tomb with a comforting message, peace. He came out of that tomb with a commissioning message, go, win, baptize, teach. Go to all nations, preach the gospel to every creature. May we hear that tonight. And then lastly tonight, Jesus, the resurrected Christ, came out of that tomb with a continuing message. A continuing message. There is no place to stop. We must never quit running the race for God. Keep on keeping on. You know, it's interesting, if you read through these chapters as, as we've been doing this last week, John 21 is an interesting chapter, isn't it? It's almost like a subtext. It almost seems like the Gospel of John ends at the end of chapter 20, doesn't it? But yet it doesn't. John 21, just as inspired of God as John 20 is. And John 21 gives us some great truths but it's interesting when you read John 21, and I won't take time to read it all or even preach through the whole chapter there in John 21, but isn't it interesting what happens there? During that 40 days, now remember, Jesus had appeared to them on day one. He appeared to them other days as well during the 40 days. He spoke many times. But it, somewhere in that 40 days, I mean, this is fresh. I mean... The death, the burial, the resurrection, it's not, not distant history. I mean, this just happened. They have just seen him. They have just heard him. And look what happens in John 21, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. That's another name for the Sea of Galilee. And on this wise showed, him, showed he himself. They were together Simon Peter. We know him, don't we? He had his issues in the resurrection story, no doubt. God had rung his bell. And Thomas, called Didymus. We know him well, the doubter. And Jesus had rung his bell. And Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee. And the sons of Zebedee. Hey, that's James and John. Sons of thunder. This is the beloved disciple. This is the one writing the book. And his brother. And two other of his disciples. It's interesting that two of those are not named. And I heard an old preacher say, the Holy Spirit put that in there to remind us that they represent you and me. <laughs> Verse 3. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, we also go with thee. Isn't that interesting? Peter, who had just been woken up, <laughs> to what Christ is doing. He had just heard the Great Commission. He already knew Jesus had said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Hey, hey, leave your nets, leave the fish, leave the boats. It's time to follow me. It's time to go and get the gospel to the world. He says, I'm going fishing. How many times we get on fire for God, we get fired up for serving God, fired up for soul winning, fired up for missions, and then all of a sudden that fire goes out. I go fishing. We get distracted by the old things of this life. And Jesus shows up and has a conversation with them, and specifically with Peter. Look down in verse 15 of chapter 21. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Notice the word these, that's a pronoun. We don't know exactly what Jesus was referring to there. Lots of people have, have guessed at that. Maybe he was pointing at the fish. Maybe he was pointing at the nets. Maybe he was pointing at the fishing boats or even the friends that were there. But he was saying, Peter, do you lovest thou me more than these? Are you willing to walk away from anything and anyone in this world to fulfill my will for your life? Peter, you're not ready yet. 
Oh, listen, in just a few days, God's going to use Peter in a miraculous way. He's going to preach at Pentecost. 3,000 souls are going to get saved and baptized. But he wasn't ready for that then. <laughs> he had his mind on earthly fish. He had his mind on things of this world. He needed a wake-up call again. You know what? This reminds me, we need continual wake-up calls. We can have a great day, Resurrection Sunday, praise the Lord. You know what? The devil's going to fight us tomorrow. He's going to fight us tonight. He's going to be back. The old flesh is going to be back. Don't you think if you die to self on Sunday that you're not going to deal with the old nature and the old flesh the rest of the week? That old flesh is going to be back. It's going to want to rule and reign. So we have to continue, continue in the things of God, continue walking with God, continually die to self and, and live the resurrected life. Oh, listen, Acts 1.1, the next uh, chapter there in Acts 1.1, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Notice the word began. You know what? We are called to finish what Jesus began. Isn't that amazing? The work of God marches on. God is always advancing. Say that with me, church. You ready? God is always advancing. Now say it like you believe it. Now I know it's resurrection Sunday night. I know we're tired. But say it like you believe it. You ready? God is always advancing. And I want to tell you something. I don't want to drag behind God. I want to advance with Him. Don't miss what God is doing. Get in on it. Because the work of God continues on, and we need to continue on. Don't quit. Don't back up. Don't back out. Oh, the Apostle Paul knew the importance of this. He said in 2 Timothy 3.14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Jesus said it. The Apostle Paul said it. Keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Hold on to God and the work of God as He holds on to you. I remember hearing a story about a, a young man here in Florida, in our beloved state of Florida. And how many of you know when you go swimming in, in Florida, especially in our lakes and canals, you've got to be very, very careful. We have creatures that live down here, you know. And this particular boy was swimming in a canal here in Florida. True story. And it was out the back of their house, and he was swimming there off the dock. And a Florida gator got a hold of his leg. Can you imagine that? He knew what it was. He knew he was in trouble. He started screaming out for help. His mother was inside the house right across the yard. She was watching. The windows were open. And she heard him scream, and he was yelling, Gator, a gator's got me, a gator. And that mother, how many of you know mothers have superhuman strength? When they need it. I've read stories about mothers picking up cars off their children that's fallen on them. It's amazing. This mother starts running like Carl Lewis across the yard, you know. And she gets to that dock and she grabs a hold of his arms. And a tug of war began between an alligator, a large alligator, and a determined mother. <laughs> and that mother won that fight. She pulled him out, and he lived. The story really began to spread through the community, and it, the news caught hold of it, and a news reporter came out and was interviewing the young man. And he was there, and he had a long sleeve shirt on, and he had on a pair of pants. Of course, he had lots of injuries. He was still recovering. And the reporter was interviewing the young man, and the reporter said, Hey, would you mind, would you mind rolling up your pant legs so that we could see the wounds and put it on, would it be okay to put that on the news? And the young man said, oh yeah, no problem. And so he rolled up his pant legs and they got footage of that. They got pictures of the bite marks and the different things on his leg. He says, but wait a minute. He said, I, I got something even more important I want to show you. He says, please put this on the news. And he began to roll his long sleeves up and reveal all these wounds on his arms. He said, please show everybody these wounds. He says, these are the wounds from my mother's fingernails because she wouldn't let me go. And he said, these are important wounds, but these are really good wounds right here. He said, I'm thankful for these wounds. That mother got a hold of something, right? And she wouldn't let go like a bulldog. 
How many of you are glad God's got a hold of you? We need to get a hold of Him. We need to get a hold of what's got a hold of us. Can I give you one more verse and I'll be done tonight? Look at Philippians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul nails this when he talks about the ministry and his life, his desire to know God and serve God. Look at Philippians chapter 3. And of course, verse 10, he talks about knowing God and the power of resurrection. And he goes on <clears throat> talking about pressing on for God in verse 14. But notice, if you will, in verse 12, he says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of, Christ Jesus. You know what he means? He means I want to get a hold of what's got a hold of me. Tonight, dear Christian, if you're saved, God's got a hold of you. He's not letting go. You're in the double fist of God. Amen? You're secure. But why don't we apprehend that which has apprehended us? Let's get a hold of what's got a hold of us. Look at verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Dear friend, church tonight, listen. Press on. Press on. Hey, you prayer warriors at our church, we need you. Press on. Get in the Word. Read the Bible. Press on. You teachers, press on. You preachers, press on. You soul winners, press on. You church attenders, press on. You choir members and instrumentalists, press on. Every one of us, press on for God. And don't give up because the resurrected Christ, He came out of that tomb with a comforting message, a commissioning message, and a continuing message. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight, thank You for the words of God that strengthen us and encourage us tonight. Lord God, I pray that we would get a hold tonight of what's got a hold of us. Help us to get a hold of you and Lord to grab a hold of your word and your truth and may it drive us and inspire us and motivate us to serve you. God, these are not days to grow apathetic, lackadaisical. Lord, these are not days to quit. These are not days to look back. These are days to press on. Lord, you're advancing. We want to advance with you. We want to see the gospel go forward. We want to be a part of that. Help us not to throw our hands up and say, I go a-fishing. But Lord, may we fish for men. May we love you more than anything in this world. May we feed your sheep and do the work you've given us to do. Save the lost, we pray tonight. Encourage the saved. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. With every head bowed tonight, every eye closed, there's nothing in this world more important than your soul's salvation. If you were to die tonight, are you 100% sure that you'd be in heaven? If you're not sure of that, the bad news is we're all sinners. The bad news is that none of us are perfect. And on our own, we could never satisfy a holy God. The wages of sin is death. That's bad news. But the good news tonight is that Jesus loves you died on the cross for your sins according to the scriptures he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures he sits in heaven's glory tonight willing and able to save sinners he can save you I know that for a fact because he saved me many years ago and he'll save you tonight if you know you need Jesus to wash you from your sins and save your soul God speaking to your heart right where you sit tonight would you call on the Lord Ask Him to save you. Call sincerely. Call on Him sincerely. Ask Him to forgive your sins and save your soul. Trust Him now as your Savior. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We invite you to come to the front tonight. Let us pray with you. If God is working in your heart in that way, we'd love to meet you here and pray with you. How many Christians, I'm sure most of us tonight, know the Lord is our Savior? How many of you would say with me, Pastor Odom, I want to hear the message of the resurrected Christ with open ears and open hearts. I want to carry the gospel. I want to fulfill the great commission. I don't want to quit. I want to have the peace of God in my heart as I do it. Pray with me. Would you lift your hand tonight, church? God bless you. God bless you. May the resurrected Christ and his message help us in a great way tonight. Let's stand together prayerfully. As God has led you to come, I want to invite you to come. This this is Sunday night service. We love to pray here. It's a precious place for us. 
I want to invite you to come. Church member, visitor, whoever you are, why don't you come tonight? Maybe many ought to come tonight and just thank Jesus for dying on the cross for your sins and rising again the third day. Come thank Him. Maybe, maybe some ought to come tonight and pray for someone that you're burdened for. Maybe a lost loved one, a backslidden loved one. Come pray for them tonight. Just find a place here. Let's, let's have a prayer meeting tonight up here for a few minutes. Let's ask God to bless and help you. Come tonight as God has led you. If you need to be saved, come let us know. We'll pray with you here. Father God, bless the invitation. Be glorified in our decisions, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You come tonight as God has so led you as we sing. Just as I am with one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou didst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark thought to thee whose blood can cleanse its blood O Lamb of God I come I come just as I Many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without a lamb of God I go, I go. May we pray together, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you've done in our hearts today. Lord, it's been a good day. We thank you for good decisions made, some saved today, others joining the church, those being baptized and, and following you in that tonight. We thank you for all these things. Lord, many other decisions and hearts, we pray now that you'll seal those things. May we not forget the work you've done today, and may we move forward in those decisions, applying the word of God, obeying the word of God. Use our lives, Lord, use our church to glorify your name. And it's in that name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. you. May be seated tonight. Before we go, we're going to baptize two of our brothers tonight. What a joy. What a blessing. And uh, Santiago, would you please stand? This is Santiago Fernandez. And Brother Olin standing here with him, if you will, brother. And we're glad to have Santiago's mom with us tonight. Good to have Odie with us. And we're glad for that. Santiago's been coming now for a while. Faithful. He's here in the evening services and, and other outreach as well. And Santiago has received Christ as a Savior. Is that right, Brother Santiago? And tonight he desires to follow the Lord in believer's baptism and to follow the Lord with his life. Is that your desire tonight? Amen. And also to join as a member of our church in serving God. So Santiago, if you'll turn and face the congregation, all those happy for his decision tonight, let it be known by a hearty amen. amen. God bless your brother. <laughs> Santiago, you may go. Raj, would you please stand? And let's have Brother Daniel and family stand with him there. That's right. And Raj uh, was visiting this weekend, and it was here. And his mother, of course, comes to our church. And Raj has received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And we're thankful for that. And uh, Raj, you're 20, 20 years old. Did I get that right? 20, young man, 20 years old. These two young men with uh, many, Lord willing, many, many years ahead to serve God as the Lord allows. But Raj has received the Lord as his, as his Savior. And he desires to follow the Lord in believer's baptism tonight in this service and live for God. Is that your desire, Raj? Well, praise the Lord. And we're going to be praying for you. And we're glad that we can be a part of that journey that you're, you're on with the Lord. If you'll turn and face our congregation, all that are happy for Raj's decision as well, let it be known by a hearty amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to let him go get ready. And uh, Brother Matt will guide him. Brother Glenn, are you still here somewhere? Okay, you ready to sing? We're going to have you sing in just a minute. Before he comes and sings and we baptize, church, just a couple quick reminders. 
Um, we have the church calendars out there, lots of good events coming up, so don't miss that. This Friday is the Senior Saints activity, and if you have any questions about that, see Rebecca uh, Besser, and she'll guide you. I think there's a sign-up sheet out there for that as well. And she wanted me to mention it's not just for the ladies, it's for the men, and there's, uh, there's going to be a game night for the men, and the painting t- time, is that just the ladies? Same time for everybody. So everybody's going to have a great time, 5 o'clock this Friday. So men, you're, you're, you're included, all right? So all those 16 above that are able to come out interested, see her about that and make sure you get signed up. Uh, don't forget that our Lady Spring Banquet's coming up May 13th. And so there are tickets. I think we have some tickets out there for that. And um, we have a great time with that. It's for our church ladies, but it's also for friends and neighbors and it's really like an outreach uh, night as well. The, the message of Christ is given, and it's just a sweet time that we have around Mother's Day every year. But this is our Lady Spring Banquet, so ladies go by and see about the tickets if you need to do that tonight. Then, May 15th. Now, I know we're just catching our breath from Resurrection Day, right? But we got one month to work at this. We're going to have Friend Day. Friend Day, May 15th, Evangelist Scott Pauley will be preaching for us that day. It'll kick off our spring revival. I would love to see this place filled. If we need to have two services on Friend Day, we'll do it. Um, but we'll, let's start inviting people and, and get them out. It's on the church calendar for May 15th, that's Friend Day. And then our spring revival is also on the calendar, May 15th through 18th. Mother's Day is on the 8th. Evangelist Bruce Humbert will be with us. How many of you remember Brother Humbert? Okay, how many remember the mustache preacher? Yeah, okay. He'll be with us May 1st, and he's coming through that day. Just lots of good things, so make sure you get that, check it out, and uh, let that be a, a, a place in your Bible or in your prayer closet that you're praying over and be a, be a part of. As you head out tonight, don't forget the gospel tracks, the hockey tracks, amen? And uh, pick those up, let those be a blessing to you, and keep all these things in prayer. Our Roman ministry celebrating four years tonight. And Brother George was over there with them earlier. I pray and hope they had a great night. Keep them in your prayers as well. Brother Lawrence and his work there with them. And God's just been so good to us. We're going to baptize here in a moment. Brother Seabass, come sing for us the song God's laid on your heart. May God bless you as you come and sing. Amen. We practiced a lot. I just handed it to him. All right, here we go. Think of all my faults and my failures when I consider all the times I let God down. I am humble that the grace He has extended. I am amazed at the mercy I have found. I could never earn his love on my own. Yet every time I come before his throne, I stand redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When he looks at me, He sees the nail-scarred hands that bought my liberty. I stand redeemed. Even at my best, I am unworthy. I have nothing precious I can give. Broken heart is all I have to offer. And yet, that is a priceless gift to Him. The bitter death of sin, Christ came to earth to pay. So I can come before Him unashamed. I stand redeemed. 
by the blood of the Lamb. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When he looks at me, he sees those nail-scarred hands that but my liberty. I stand redeemed. I stand redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When he looks at me, he sees those nail-scarred hands and but my liberty. I stand redeemed. I stand redeemed. Thank you, Brother Glenn for that. Santiago, if you'll come first and make your way down, grab the handle here. God bless your brother. Come on down. Okay, grab my wrist with this hand. Give me that wrist. You're going to plug your nose with this hand, okay? This is Santiago. Santiago, have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. Upon your public profession of faith in Christ, my brother, and in obedience to our Lord's command, I happily baptize you tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of His death, raised in the likeness of His resurrection, walk in newness of life, brother. God bless you. It's a blessing. Got the rail there, okay? Good job. Praise the Lord. This is Raj. Raj is in college in New York, and he's asked us to pray for him, and he wants to follow Christ, and we're excited to be a part of this part of his life. And how many of you believe in divine appointments? Amen. Raj, do you know you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Amen, brother. Upon your public profession of faith in Christ, my brother, and in obedience to our Lord's command, I happily baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection, walk in newness of life. God bless you, Raj. What has been done as the Lord Jesus Christ has clearly commanded, and all God's people said, Amen. praise the Lord. Let's stand together. Today's been a wonderful day in the Lord, hasn't it? God's been so good to us. And yet the work continues on. Let's leave this service tonight ready to serve God in a great way in the days ahead. As we head out, we're going to have a word of prayer over a dedication over these young men. And then I'm going to ask Brother Dwight to come back and lead us in the last verse. I think it's the last verse we have of He Lives. And we sang that earlier. We're going to end the day with that song, He Lives. And we'll leave tonight rejoicing and ready to serve our great Savior. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you've done today. Thank you for souls saved. Thank you for people joining the church, those being baptized. This is your work, Lord. We're thankful to have a part in it. Bless, we pray as we go. May your work be in our heart. May the days ahead be fruitful days for thy honor and glory. Bless us now as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing it like we believe it as we head out tonight. I serve a risen Savior, let your seed eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way he lives he lives right you are 
ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. No community choir practice tonight. Thank you.